Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll solve our problem number 199. 199 being 199 is our penultimate problem. Is our penultimate problem. We learned this word in our vocabulary lessons, if you recall, in our vocabulary lessons on day number 11. Penultimate is a very fancy way of saying second to the last because tomorrow it's going to be the problem number 200 which is going to be the very last problem in our series of algebra word problems. Where, where would we find them? Algebra word problems is not even listed here for some reason, but that's what it is. We have this series of algebra, of course, from 1 through 100, and then from 101 through 200, we had algebra word problems, which is what we are working on, and tomorrow, as I said, it's going to be the last one. Let's get going. It says, yesterday, yesterday I traveled 90 kilometers by bike. Okay, listen very carefully. Yesterday, I traveled 90 kilometers by bike. In the beginning, I rode at 10 kilometers per hour. KPH there that you see there. KPH stands for kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. Just like we have MPH we use in the US for miles per hour. In the beginning, we are told that I rode 10 kilometers per hour. Then I slowed down, afterwards I slowed down to 6 km per hour. Now when the transition took place, of course we do not know. We are further told that had I traveled, had I, rod, had I biked, had I biked at 6 km per hour when I biked at 10 km per hour and vice versa. In other words, had I spent the same amount of time that I spent at 10 km per hour, had I spent that time riding at 6 km per hour and I had, had I spent the remainder amount of time that I spent at 6 km per hour at 10 kilometers per hour, had I done that, I would have traveled only 70 kilometers in the same amount of time because the amount of time is not changing. It is the distance, of course, is going to change because I'm switching the speeds. The question simply is how long did I bike? How long did I bike? For those of you who've been watching these word problems in the in this in in, in, in its proper sequence, you would recognize that we did two two problems very similar to this one, number 172. And 181. If you want to watch those two problems as well, you will see that they are very similar. Let's get going, shall we? So let's set it up. We are traveling 90 kilometers. So let's make a diagram with a distance of 90 kilometers and see what happens. We are going to go total of 90 kilometers per 90 kilometers. Part of our distance, let's call it D. Part of our distance, we're going to travel at 10 kilometers per hour at 10 kilometers per hour, let's call it T1 hours. For T1 hours in the beginning, we're going to go, T1 hours, we're going to go at 10 kilometers per hour. Well, if this is D kilometers and the total is 90 kilometers, which means that the remainder amount, 90 minus D kilometers, 90 minus D kilometers, we're going to travel it for T2 hours at the slower speed, which is 6 kilometers per hour. The question is, what do these what do these quantities work out to be? The T1 and the T2, the hours, the T1 and the T2, which is very simple. T1 hours that we're going to spend at this speed, at 10 kilometers per hour in the beginning, has to has to equal to the fact that it, if we travel d kilometers in that time at 10 kilometers per hour, which means the T1 that we're talking about, T1 hours, T1 hours would have to equal the distance that we are traveling which is d kilometers at 10 kilometers per hour. As you can see, the kilometers are going to drop out, the kilometers are going to drop out and the hours is going to end up on the top. So this is the T1. T1 is simply d over 10 hours. d over 10 hours. Let's put it here. d over 10 hours. This is our T1. Let's do a similar work for D T2. T2 is simply going to be the fact that we traveled 
how much distance did we travel? We traveled 90 minus d. 90 minus d kilometers at what speed? At 6 kilometers. At 6 kilometers per hour. There we go. Again, the kilometers are going to drop out. The kilometers are going to drop out and the hours is going to end up on the top. And what we end up is 90 minus d over 6. So t2 t2 is simply equal to 90 minus d over 6 hours. Now what's going to happen? Now the second half of the story. second half of the story tells us that the amount of time that we spent at traveling 10 kilometers per hour, had we spent the same amount of time going 6 kilometers per hour, and the amount of time that we spent at 6 kilometers per hour originally, had we spent the same amount of time going at 10 kilometers per hour, we would have traveled 20 kilometers less. Instead of 90 kilometers, we would have traveled 70 kilometers. We have to make use of that statement, that part of the story, on the top there, and we'll see what happens. The key here, the key here is to go systematically, logically, rationally, don't try to go all over the place, do you understand? So let's make a note of it. Had I bite, right, we need the room obviously, so we're going to spend, uh, we're, going to, we're going to erase this thing. Now remember, we spent d over 10 hours at 10 kilometers per hour. Remember that, you have to remember that. Now, in the second half of the story, we're going to spend the same amount of time, d over 10 hours, but we're not going to go 10 kilometers per hour. We're going to spend d over 10 hours at 6 kilometers an hour. And we're going to spend 90 minus d over 6 hours going at not 6 kilometers per hour, but 10 kilometers per hour. We're going to switch the speeds. Let's do it on the top. One more time. If you're interested, you can watch 172 and 181. So, they go on to tell us that had I bite, had I bite, D over 10 hours, D over 10 hours at not 10 kilometers per hour, but 6 kilometers per hour. And 90 minus D over 6, 90 minus D over 6 hours at not, not 6 kilometers per hour, but 10 kilometers per hour. Per hour, I would have traveled. I would have traveled 70 kilometers. We are told that, and that's going to be our equation. So we have our time, we have our speed. If you know this time that you to spend or traveling, and you know your speed, you can figure out the distance. So this distance, and here we have the time, we have the speed. This distance plus this distance must add up to 70. That's our equation. So let's do that here. We need the top, we need the room obviously. I need to erase stuff. We have to begin to erase stuff. So let's erase this diagram. We no longer need it. And eventually, of course, we're gonna to have to erase everything. So d over 10 hours times 6 kilometers per hour, 6 kilometers per hour, this is going to be a distance, plus 9 minus d over 6, 9, not rather 90 minus d over 6 hours times, hours is not, doesn't look right, hours times, 10 kilometers per hour again as you can see as you can see the hours are going to drop out and we are left with kilometers the hours are going to drop out and we are left with kilometers and this quantity and this quantity ha has to add up to 70 has to add up to 70 that's exactly what we're going to do here I'm going to erase all of this thing because otherwise it gets to be too crowded and this has to add up to 
these two distances have to add up to 70. This has to add up to 70 kilometers and this has to add up to 70 kilometers. That's it, that's our equation. What's the unknown here? What's the unknown in this thing? The only unknown here, there's only one variable that is, uh, that is not known here. There's only one unknown, which is D. There you go. Once we know the distance that we traveled at one speed, we can figure out the amount, number of hours that we spent at that speed. Uh, once we know, rather, D is the unknown here. Once we know the amount, amount of distance that we travel, the, the initial amount of distance that we travel, we know the speed, we can figure out how much time we spend there. And from that, we can figure out the speed, or how much time, or how much time we spend there, rather. And similarly, once we know the value of D, the remainder, 90 minus D, is going to be the second segment of the journey. And we know the speed for it, we can figure out the time. Because that was the question, wasn't it? The question was, how long did I travel? I believe that was the question. Yes, how long did I travel? So let's do it, shall we? I'm going to erase all of this thing. It's getting too crowded, it's getting too silly. Let's rewrite this equation. Let's rewrite this equation without the units. So we're going to have 6 times d, 6d over 10. I'm not going to write 6d over 10. Let's, let's, let's look like this 5 and make this 3. So it's 3 fifths, 3 fifths, 3 fifths d plus, and here again 6 is going to cancel out with 10. We're going to end up with 5 and a 3. So we end up with 5, this 5, times this quantity. 90 minus d over 3 equals 70. There you go. There is our equation. So we have a 3 here, we have a, we have a 5 here, we have a 3 here, we have a 1 here. It will be nice if we have a common, if we had a common denominator. So let's make it a common denominator. I'm going to multiply the first term here by 3 over 3, or rather 5 over 5, because we want to get it to 5. No, we want to make the common denominator of 15. 3 times 5 is 15. Here we have a 3, we need 15, so let's multiply it by 5 over 5. Remember, this is times 5, so it's going to be 25 now. And this, since we're multiplying, since we want the common denominator, we have 15 here, we have 5 times 3, we need to multiply this by 15 over 15. Now, everybody has the same denominator. First term has a denominator of 3 times 5. Second term has a denominator of 3 times 5. This side has a denominator of 15. Nobody has the right to brag. Look at me, I got a denominator of 15. So does everybody else. Shut up, do you understand? It plays no role. It loses its significance. It has no significance. We can ignore it. We can, we can just forget about it. Because everybody has the same thing. 3 times 3 is 9d plus 25 times 90. Jesus, 25 times 90. There must be something we can do here. Twenty-five times ninety. How would we figure it out? Well, hundred times hundred times ninety. Hundred times ninety. Hundred times ninety is simply is simply nine thousand. So half of that is going to be four thousand five hundred, and another half is going to be two thousand two hundred and fifty. Two thousand two hundred and fifty. Because you see, 100 times 90 is 9,000. If you take a half of it, you're taking 50 times 90. 50 times 90 should be 4,500. And if you take a half of that one more time, that should represent 25. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 90 should be 2,250. 2,250. Now we have to do 25 times D. This, this 5 and this 5, 25 times D, which is 25D. I'm going to erase all of this thing, we don't need it anymore. And now we have to figure out here 70 times 15. 70 times 15. 17 times 5. 17 times 5. Or rather, 15 times 7 is 35. Carry 3, 105. Of course, it's 105. We didn't have to do all of this thing because if you, understand, if you realize, that 15 times 5, 15 times 10 is 150. Listen carefully. 15 times 10 would have been 150. If 15 times 10 is 150, then 15 times 5 should be 75. That's only 5 15s. We need 7 15s. So to add two more 15s, two 15s are 30. So 75 plus a 30, 75 plus a 30, 70 plus 30 is 100. And the 5 will make it 105. Okay, let's 
see what we can do. We're getting a negative quantity here. Of course, we're getting a negative one because we have a large number here. So 25 minus 9 is going to be 16. 16d equals 2250, 2250 minus 105, minus 105. Let's find out what that is. 250, 250 minus 100 would have been 150. We're not subtracting 100, we're not subtracting 100, we're subtracting 105. So one more time, 250, 250 minus 100 would have been 150. It's not going to be 150, it's going to be 145 because we're subtracting 105. So 145. Voila. How did we turn into this much of a complication? I do not know because that's not that's not the sort of mumbo jumbo I have here. That's that's not the sort of mumbo jumbo I have here. I have 70 times 70 times 15. Oh, this, this is not making sense. 15 times 7 is 105. It's not 15 times 7. It's 15 times it's 15 times 70. So we need zero here. We need a zero here. Voila. This 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 makes a big difference here because I I was getting weird number. This thing does not seem to be many multiples of 16. I left out a zero. This is 15 times 7. We need 15 times 70. This zero here, this zero here has to be has to be put in here. You understand this zero came from here. So let's start again. 2050 times minus 1000 would have been 1050. 1000. 2250 minus 1000 would have been 1250. But it's not 2250 times minus 1000. It's 2250 minus 1050. So it's just going to be 1200. It's just going to be 1200. Question is how many how many 16 does 1200 have? Let's do it on the top here, or we can continue somewhere here. Let's do it on the top. It's very easy to lose concentration. It's very easy, and so the D has to equal this quantity 1200, of which I'm going to write that as 12 times 100 over 16. I want to write this 1200 as 12 times 100 because it's easier to deal with it now. This, If you divide top and bottom by 4, this becomes 4 and this becomes 3. We have a 4 here, we have a 100 here. Divide top and bottom by 4 one more time and 100 becomes 25. In other words, D is 75. Voila! D is 75. Let's see what that looks like in the picture, okay? I'm going to erase all of this thing. We need the room. So D is 75, if you recall, our picture looked like this. This one was our D, which we just found out is 75 kilometers, which means 90 minus D, 90 minus D, which is going to be 15 kilometers. And now that we know that D is 75 and this is 15, I'm going to change the marker a little bit down here. Not that it matters, not that it matters, but it will look better. There, 15 kilometers, 75 kilometers, and what happens in the beginning? We've the D kilometers we were told we were going at 10 kilometers per hour. 10 kilometers per hour. And remember, the question was how long did it take to make the journey? How long did I bike? So that's what we're figuring it out. Okay, we almost finished here. So if you travel 75 kilometers at 10 kilometers per hour, 75 kilometers at 10 kilometers per hour implies that it will take us seven and a half hours. That's the first part. And then we switch to 6 kilometers per hour. 15 kilometers at 6 kilometers per hour. If you're going 6 kilometers per hour, in one hour you're going to do 6 kilometers, in two hours you will do 12 kilometers, and then to go another 3 kilometers, because you don't want to go 12 kilometers, we want to go 15 kilometers, another 3 kilometers will take another half an hour. So that means this will take 2 and a half hours. And that's it, we're done. Question was, how long did the journey take? The answer is, journey took me a grand total of 10 hours. Total time, 
total time was 10 hours. Very good. As far as the problem is concerned, as far as the, we had a little hiccup there where I, where I left out zero and it was getting weird, this zero right here. That, uh, that's, that's the boo-boo I made there, but it seemed too weird, so I caught it right away. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done with the problem, it's all over and done with. We're going to take a few seconds, we're going to take a minute or two to verify our answer, make sure that our answer is correct. Let's do the verification, shall we? Let's do the verification at the bottom here. But there is, there is our answer. We are claiming that we spent a grand total of 10 hours, 7.5 hours for the first leg of the journey, 2.5 hours for the other uh, second leg. Verify it. So if you're going to verify it, here's how the verification is going to go. We're going to go for 7.5 hours, 7.5 hours at not 10 kilometers per hour, but 6 kilometers per hour, 6 kilometers per hour. How far will we travel? As you can see, as you can clearly see, the hours are going to drop out and it's going to be seven and a half times six. That's how many kilometers we travel. And let's see what that is, shall we? Stay with me in this story. It's very important that you stay with me. So we can multiply seven and a half times six. Seven times six is 42. Seven times six is 42. And then we have half times six. If you have six halves, six halves are three. Six halves are three. Two halves are one. Six halves, this is what we are saying. Six halves are three. That's what we are saying here. Six halves are three. Two halves are one. Four halves are two. Six halves are three. So that's 45 kilometers. As long as second part comes out in such a way, as long as second part comes out such a way that the distance turns out to be what we what we were told it was, which was we were told that at, at these speeds we travel 90 kilometers, which means second part also better turn out to be 45 kilometers because 45 plus 45 would be 90. Let's see what this, or rather we are switching the speeds. We have to be careful. I'm not thinking straight. You see, this is the original scenario. In the original scenario, when you were going 10 kilometers per hour, uh, the first segment and six kilometers per hour is the second segment. We travel 90 kilometers. As you can see, 9, 75 plus 15 is 90. 75 plus 15 is 90. What we are trying to verify is that if this, if these times are correct, if these times are correct, then if we were to switch the speeds, we should go 70 kilometers, not 90. I wasn't thinking. We have to add up to 70. Let's see what happens. So now we're going to go, the so first segment was 7.5 hours, not at 10 kilometers per hour, but at 6 kilometers per hour. The second segment is going to be 2.5 hours, 2.5 hours. At not at not at six kilometers per hour, but ten kilometers per hour. Again, the hours are going to drop out, and we are left with two and a half times ten. Two and a half times ten is twenty-five. Two and a half times ten is twenty-five kilometers. As you can see, if you were to add twenty-five to it, we will get. 70 kilometers, just like we were supposed to, just like we were supposed to, because if we switch the speeds, if we switch the speed, we were told that we'll end up traveling only 70 kilometers, and that is exactly what we find. That tells us that the, these time segments are correct. We must have gone seven and a half hours for the first part of the journey at the higher speed of 10 kilometers per hour, and as we got tired, we switched to six kilometers per hour, and we went for another two and a half hours. But had we done the other way around, we would have gone only 70 kilometers. Bye now.